key to success in working these kinds of problems usually lies in remembering that the heat at constant pressure is equal to the change in entropy of a reaction. In a chemical reaction, the change in enthalpy for the overall reaction may be found by taking the sum of the change in enthalpy of the products minus the sum of the change in enthalpy of the reactants. And you've got to remember that for a constant pressure reaction, that the heat of the reaction is equal to the change in enthalpy for the reaction. But that only works now for a constant pressure reaction. Constant volume reaction is a whole different situation. Let's calculate the heat of this reaction. And as we do, let's talk about what some of these things mean. For example, we start off by looking up the heats of formation from the elements at standard state conditions for everything in the reaction. Now, it's logical that the heat of formation of hydrogen at stand from its elements at standard state conditions is zero. Why? Well, it's at standard state conditions, it's diatomic, and it's a gas. That's the way it exists. That is its elemental form, if you will, at standard state conditions. Therefore, there hasn't been a change. It's zero. Chlorine is the same thing. Chlorine exists diatomically as a gas at standard state conditions. And because it exists diatomically as a gas at standard state conditions, that is, it's, it's already there as the elemental form, if you will. So it's delta H is zero kilojoules per mole. But now HCl is not the same. When you form HCl from its elements at standard state conditions, it has to be formed from hydrogen and chlorine as they would exist at standard state conditions, which of course is H2 plus Cl2. And that is minus 92.31 kilojoules per mole. Now in this balanced equation, and you have to work in a balanced equation, you have two moles. So what we're saying is that HCl is lower in energy by 92.31 kilojoules per mole than the sum of its elements at standard state conditions. The way you calculate the delta H for the reaction is to take the delta H for the products minus the delta H for the reactants. The sum of the delta H's of the products minus the sum of the delta H's of the reactants. And remember, it's products minus reactants. So we take the products. Well, that is minus 92.31 kilojoules per mole times two moles. And then, of course, we have the delta H of the reactants. Well, they're zero. In any way you cut it, you add zero to zero, and you still have zero. So the delta H for this reaction is minus 184.62 kilojoules for the two moles of HCl that have been formed. Now keep that in mind that that is for two moles. For each mole it's minus 92.31 kilojoules per mole. Let's go to one that's a little more interesting. Oh first, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well the delta H is negative. Now put this in there and remember it. The delta H is negative means that heat is given off Therefore, the reaction is exothermic. The delta H were positive, the reaction would be endothermic. But it's Let's calculate the heat of combustion for two grams of acetylene. We have a balanced equation showing two moles of acetylene. C2H2 gas is acetylene plus five moles of oxygen reacting to give us four moles carbon dioxide gas and two moles of water vapor. Let's go through and look up the heat of formation from the elements of each of these things at standard state conditions. Well, when I looked up acetylene, I came up that it's positive 226.7 kilojoules per mole times two moles. Let's look at oxygen. How does oxygen exist at standard state conditions? It exists exactly as I'm showing it here, doesn't it? Therefore, its delta H, or its heat of formation, is zero. 
Let's go to carbon dioxide. What is the heat of formation of carbon dioxide from its elements at standard state conditions? Well, it has to be formed from carbon and oxygen, so a reaction would have to be involved. And we look it up and we find that the delta H for carbon dioxide is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole, but there are four moles of them. Now let's go to water vapor. Does water vapor exist as an element? No. And to form it from its elements at standard state conditions, when we look it up, tells us that it is going to evolve, it's going to evolve 241.8 kilojoules per mole, times two moles. Now let's see if we can find the heat of this combustion for this overall reaction. We take the delta H for the reaction, and that is equal to the sum of the delta H of the products minus the sum of the delta H of the reactants. When I plug all of this in, as I'm showing you here, I calculate that the delta H for the reaction is minus 2509.4 kilojoules, but that's for two moles of acetylene. And that's not what we want. We want it for two grams of acetylene. Well, two grams times one mole over 26 grams, it's a molecular weight of C2H2, times an evolution of 2509.4 kilojoules for two moles gives me minus 96.5 kilojoules for two grams. In other words, when two grams of acetylene combust with oxygen, forming carbon dioxide and water, we evolve 96.5 kilojoules of heat. That's a lot of heat for a small amount of a material. Brought to you courtesy of the chemistry professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our website at www.